I want to talk to you here for a little bit about Martin Richling's Other Christ. Uh, Martin Richling does not worship the Jesus Christ of the Bible. He worships the Jehovah's Witness false Christ, a Christ that was created. Okay, and uh, I'm going to play this thing here for you. But first, let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. Many of you have heard of this thing already, that this wicked little devil, uh, Martin Richling, he calls himself a pastor. The guy, the guy is such a joke. You know, he plays videos and he'll like play two minutes and then he does this little like impy, like devil laughing. <laughs> and, and then he like attacks people. He attacks them personally and, you know, makes fun of them and, and all this stuff, you know. And the guy tries to say he's teaching the Bible and everything else and, you know, it's, I'm, I, I'm the brave, you know, Martin Richling. I just don't allow comments or ratings on my videos, but, you know, whatever. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Now what you're going to hear in this audio recording coming up is Martin Richling actually saying that Jesus Christ is a created being. Now, let me just explain this thing. When you say that you're the beginning of the creation of God, that means that you are God and you are there in the beginning. Okay? Um, my wife and I bought land not too far from where this building is. We're going to have to be there in the beginning of the creation of a home. That doesn't mean that we ourselves are going to be the home or that we are created. We're going to have to be there in the beginning of the creation of a home. See? Jesus Christ is there in the beginning. He is the beginning of the creation of God. God didn't create Him. And I'm going to prove that to you in this study today. I'm going to show you lots of scriptures, which, which uh, little Richling there apparently doesn't know. But let's listen to the audio here. Here it is. Listen, I'm going to tell you a big pill to swallow. I've never taught it to you, but I'm teaching it to you now because it come up here. And some of you may wonder, Jesus Christ was the firstborn of every creature. Jesus Christ is created by God the Father. That's why Christ says, my Father is greater than I. He says that, yes, he's equal to the Father in relationship. But when it comes to power, Jesus Christ was the beginning, verse 14 says, of the creation of God. And after God created Jesus Christ, okay, then Jesus Christ and God the Father and the Holy Spirit created everything else. Don't you know, in Genesis chapter 1, go with me there, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Look at verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Who do you think the light is there? What do you think that light is that God said, let there be light? The sun isn't created till days later. The moon isn't created till days later. You see that? The sun, the moon, and the stars are created on the fourth day. So what's this light? The light of the world in John chapter 1 is Jesus Christ. The light created there in Genesis 1 is Jesus Christ. Now people think I'm a heretic nut. Let me tell you what. If you read this Bible and let the Bible just speak on itself and don't come, at, come to it with preconceived ideas, you will see that Jesus Christ is the beginning of the creation of God. He's the beginning. That's the light there in Genesis 1. That matches the light of John 1. He's the light. Okay, capital L. But here in Revelation 3, where it says he's the beginning of the creation of God, Colossians is saying the same thing. If you look in Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Jesus Christ is the firstborn. He's a created son of God. God created him. Okay? These people who teach that Jesus Christ was always there, as God has always, see, God has always been there don't know the scriptures. What do you do with the verses I just showed you? They don't do anything with them. Wow, what what uh, scriptural exposition there, buddy. Oh boy, he's this guy's a genius, man. He He's read through the Bible. I read the Bible eight hours a day and 300 times through. <laughs> you know, God, it cracks me up. You know, oh, no pride there, you know. 
But uh, here he posted this on his website, just in case you think, well, he said that, but he took it back. This is just the other day, the 27th here of January, 2014. He says, I'll put it up on screen. Here is a Bible test for your wicked hearts, you so-called King James Bible believers. Boy, you feel the love there, you know. The Lord Jesus Christ says this about his own self. Revelation 3.14 quotes the verse we just read earlier. Do you believe sixth grade English? English? Nope. So what do you do? You rest the scriptures to match your thinking, and guess what? You then are agreeing with the Satanic NIV Bible. Huh? Uh, so in other words, he comes out and rests the scriptures, makes it say something it doesn't say, and then he blames you for sticking by what the Bible actually says. And he says, you're resting the scriptures because you don't say that, it's, that Jesus is created. guy is uh, quite messed up. Let me just uh, put that thing down. Now I'm going to show you the scriptures. So is Jesus Christ a created being? Is he a creation of God? Well, let's look about this thing. Notice it says there in, in Revelation 3.14, the beginning of the creation of God. The beginning. John chapter 1. Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. What was that B word we just read back there in Revelation 3, 14? It was beginning. Okay, it says here, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Who is the Word? Look over at uh, verse 14. And the Word, capital W, that only appears seven times in your King James Bible, the capital W Word, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. God gave His only begotten Son, only begotten, full of grace and truth. Who's it a reference to? The Lord Jesus Christ. Wait a second. All things were made by Him. If He's a created being, how could He make all things? Hmm? And why would he be called God? The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Did God create himself? No. God didn't create himself. Jesus Christ is God and always was God. You see, stupid little Richling has this system where he has... God at first, I guess it's God and the Holy Spirit, so it's it's a it's not a trinity, it's a, a, a duality or something. I don't even know what you'd call it. It's just two. And then God creates Jesus Christ on the first day of creation. But how did that work? Because the Bible said all things are created by Him, the Word. And the Word was God was with God. The Word was manifested and dwelt among men. It's Jesus Christ. Jesus was not created. Incredible. 1 Timothy 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God was manifest in the flesh. And of course, the little rich thing goes, you know, Jesus is God now, but he wasn't at the beginning because at the beginning he was created. This guy's mentally sick. If you haven't figured that out yet, he's mentally sick. You'll, you know, I've, I've been trying to watch some of this guy's videos and stuff, and I'm going to be bringing out even more information on this loser. And 
he takes things and he twists it and tweaks it and, and it makes somebody say something that they never even said. Okay? He's got some problems up here. Some big problems. Jesus Christ is God and always was God. Isaiah 63. Come back in your Old Testament to Isaiah 63. Isaiah 63, verse 16. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us, acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our father, our redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. God's name is from everlasting. You say, well, that's God the Father. That's not Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the Son. So God's everlasting, but Jesus is not, because he was created on the first day. Right? Let's continue. Micah. Micah 5.2. Micah 5.2. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, Though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old from the first day of creation. No, it says from everlasting. You say, oh, that's a reference to God. God's not going to be the one physically here on the earth just as himself without Jesus Christ. Okay? Jesus Christ, the Son is the one unto whom this world is to be given as an inheritance. So you have back there in Isaiah 63, 16, it says God is from everlasting. Here in Micah 5, 2, it says that Jesus Christ, the one that's going to rule over the people of Israel there, the ruler in Israel for the millennial kingdom, Jesus Christ, his origins are from old, from everlasting. What does that mean? God and Jesus are one and the same. Jesus was not created. You say, well, you know, these are shaky scriptures. We're not done yet. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being by interpretation king of righteousness, and after that also king of Salem, which is king of peace. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth a priest continually. Having neither beginning of days? Well, if he was created, he would have a beginning of days, wouldn't he? No, you see, he's from everlasting. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by him. Who's the Him? The Word, Jesus Christ. He is the beginning of the creation of God. He was there. He is God. Therefore, He is the beginning of what was created. He is the one who was there and He created all things. He is the beginning. He's the one that started the creation. By his power, he created everything out there. It's insane that this guy would even believe this. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, 
and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion for ever and amen, ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Alpha and Omega. Which is, which was, and is to come. He's eternal. There's no point in time when Jesus Christ did not exist. If you go back into eternity past, before the world was created, it wasn't this two-pronged thing, you know, God and the Holy Spirit, and there's nothing else there. Jesus Christ was there the whole time. At least the Jesus Christ that we Christians know. As a lost man there, as a lost little devil, Richling, you don't know the Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. The one that's written about here in these pages. The one whose origins are from everlasting. You don't know him. I don't know who your Christ is. Probably the Antichrist. But, uh, Colossians 1. Colossians 1, verse 12 through 17. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Well, why would he be the firstborn of every creature? Because he was there in the beginning before anything was created. Verse 16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Wait a second. If all things are created by Jesus Christ, how could he then be created? Hello? Am I getting through the thick skull there, Martin? Or are the devils so powerful, have they taken over so much of your mind that you're not able to capable, not even capable to think anymore? That could be the, 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 what's really going on there. I mean, Jesus Christ said, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Speaking of Judas Iscariot, you know, maybe Martin Richling is just a devil that walks around on the earth. Maybe he's just so filled with devils that there's nothing even home up here anymore. i got to wonder about that guy. It's incredible. All things are created by Jesus Christ. Everything. How can you do that if you yourself are created? It doesn't work. And it says there, He is before all things. But He was created. Okay? Ridiculous. But, Je but, you know, then they'll say, but Jesus said that God the Father is greater. See? So that means that he is, you know, Jesus you know, said that and God the Father is greater. Let's look about that. John chapter 14, verse 28. And I'm going to get a little bit ticked off in this video because you're attacking the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? You're putting down my Savior. So the gloves are off, pal. You're not my pal, actually. I'm sorry. I take that back. I apologize. I repent. You're not my pal. You're my enemy. All right? Martin Richling is the enemy. He's a very, very, very wicked man. Extremely wicked. That's why, if you watch the guy, you know, the Bible talks about in John chapter 10, that this, the voice of a stranger... 
the sheep don't hear it. They're just like, whoa, uh, you know, get away from me. That's why you go to Martin Richling's channel and it's just like, ugh, ugh, man, this guy's horrible. Why? He's not saved. He's not a Christian. He's a devil. He's a very wicked devil. John 14, verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would re rejoice, because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. Was God the Father greater than Jesus Christ? There, in that passage. Yes. You say, why? Well, let me explain something. The Godhead is made up of three. You got that? Body, soul, spirit. Now, the Bible says that we also have a body, soul, spirit. That doesn't mean that we are gods. It doesn't mean that we are like God as far as I'm on his level. Not even close. Not even infinitesimally close. I mean, we're talking... But we have a body, soul, and spirit. Now let me ask you a question. The Trinity, the Godhead, who's the spirit? The Holy Ghost. Who's the soul? God the Father. Who's the body? Jesus Christ. Now let's compare it to me. What's the spirit in me? The Holy Ghost, in spite of what Martin Richling thinks. What's the soul? The part of me that's eternal. Okay? You can't see my soul right now. What's my body? What you're looking at. Is my soul greater than my body of flesh? Uh-huh. Let me show you something. See that? Cutting myself there, working and stuff around the place, you know, and there I was outside and I fell down in the ice and, and scraped my hand up and everything. Well, that really hurt when I cut my soul. Uh, I didn't cut my soul. You know why? Because my soul is within the body. So my soul is superior to my body, to my flesh. Well, then that means my soul and my spirit, or my, my flesh, are two different things. No, it doesn't. It just simply means in this life, with this corruptible flesh, my soul is superior. My soul is greater than my flesh. That's what Jesus Christ was saying. It wasn't that Jesus Christ is saying, I'm somehow under God the Father, and He's so much greater than I, I can't even, you know, I'm not even on His level. That's not what's going on there. Jesus Christ is saying simply, you don't understand the fact that my Father, the soul that's in me, you don't understand the fact because you're looking at my body of flesh. You're looking, I don't know, Jesus might have had scars from you know, carpentry accidents or things or whatever, uh, he might have been dirty at the time of talking to him. I don't know. Why? His flesh was corruptible, just like our flesh is corruptible. Now, he was the only one that ever lived in the flesh and did not sin. That's true. Okay? I can't say that about myself. Nobody can say that about themselves as a saved Christian. But his flesh was still corruptible. When he died on the cross, he felt it. When they whipped him, when they beat him, there was blood that came out. When they nailed the, the, the nails through his hands, it didn't just kind of boing, bounce off or something like that. It was corruptible. But guess what? The soul didn't feel that. If you hurt your flesh, if you cut your flesh or, or get beat or something like that, your body feels it. Your soul doesn't. So in that sense, yes, your soul is greater than your flesh. See? That's all that's going on there in that passage. Jesus is not saying, I'm the created being, and God the Father is the one that created me. That's not what Jesus Christ is saying there. And I'm going to show you proof. Look over at verse 6, there in John chapter 14. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. He's standing right in front of them. Now look at their response. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? 
He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. He that hath seen me hath seen Brian Denninger. You've never seen Brian Denninger. You say, I've seen you right now. No, you're not. You're seeing my body. But you don't see the soul. See, you shoot this body, and I go down, and I'm laying there, you know, dead like that. Uh, all you're going to see is the body. And you leave that body there long enough, it's going to rot, it's going to stink. All right? But the soul's gone. You can do whatever you want to this body. You can't do, do anything with my soul. You can't mess with my soul. Why? It's eternal. You see? You know? And the spirit, the breath that's in me, and the Holy Spirit that's dwelling in me, that spirit, put your hand up and I'm laying there dead. Put your hand up there. There's no more breath coming out. The spirit leaves. The soul leaves. The body's there. See? That's what's going on there. But the fact is, God the Father was dwelling bodily in Jesus Christ. And it was always that way. You see, if you'd have gone to heaven back there in the Old Testament before Jesus Christ came down to the earth, you would have seen a form like the Son of God. See? You would have seen some kind of form there. It would have been a body. Jesus Christ there in the flesh. Alright? You would not have seen this glowing, this kind of a glowing thing there or something like that. Ah, uh, you wouldn't have seen that. You'd have seen a man sitting there. That's why Abraham saw this priest after the order of Melchizedek, he saw him. Nebuchadnezzar throws the three guys into the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he says, there's four in there, and one is like unto the Son of God. Why? It's a pre-incarnate Christ. The angel of the Lord, back in the Old Testament, many times appeared on the earth as a pre-incarnation of Jesus Christ. That's what's going on there. Why? Jesus Christ has always been. He is the third part of the Godhead. It was not two in the beginning and then one was created. That's heresy. That's satanic heresy. Jesus Christ has been from everlasting. He was there in the beginning of the creation of God. He himself is not created, but he was there in the beginning. All things are made by him. Nothing came before him. It was all made by the Lord Jesus Christ. John 8. John 8. Verse 56 here. Jesus makes a very interesting statement here. It says here, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, now look at this, before Abraham was, I am. What was their reaction? Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Why did they get so upset? Because Jesus spoke a title that it belongs to only God the Father in eternity. You see, the only statement that an eternal being can make is, I am. You say, where were you at in the past? I am. Where are you at right now? I am. Where are you going to be in the future? I am. That's the only statement that an eternal being could make. Why? It's present tense the whole way through. He always was there. Jesus Christ here is saying that he was there at the beginning. That he was there in everlasting. You see, you can't say, Brian Denlinger, where were you in 1826? I can't say, I am. I can't do that. I wasn't back there. You say, where were you in 1975? Well, I was born in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. I am from Pennsylvania. 
You say, how about uh, 1775? No, it wasn't there. See? I was created by God in 1975. I wasn't created before then. So you can't say, I can't make the, the, all, the, the statement there, I am, and have it refer to all of eternity. I am not the Alpha and Omega. I am not the beginning and the ending. I was not the with word that was with God and was God. I am not any of those things. Only one man can say that, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, who Martin Richling professes to know, but yet obviously in his words he denies. Turn to Exodus chapter 3. I'll show you this thing. It's tying here with God, the Father. Exodus chapter 3. Exodus 3, verse 6. It says here, Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. He said, I am. But look at verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. That's a very holy title of God. Very holy. That's why a lot of the new versions will change it. They'll say, I am what I am, or something, or I am who I am, or something like that. Uh, that don't cut it. I am that I am. That's the statement of somebody who has existed for all of eternity. And the Lord Jesus Christ made the statement in the New Testament. And just so you know that it wasn't just him saying, well, I am, you know, Jesus. Just so you know that that's not what happened there. The Bible records that the Jews were so mad that they took up stones to throw them at him. Why? Because he made himself the everlasting God with that one statement. Two little words. I am three letters. Jesus Christ is the everlasting God. Jesus Christ was not created. A couple more places to turn to here. First John chapter five. John chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. Like John 14, verse 6. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by him, the Word. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Wait, no, it, actually 1 John 5, 7, the Johannine comma, actually should be better translated this way, um, if you're stupid richling. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one today, but they weren't at the beginning of the creation because then it was only the Father and the Holy Ghost and Jesus the Word had to be created at some later point in time. The first day of creation was Jesus created. That's not what the Bible says. Jesus Christ is God and always has been and always will be. In spite of what some devil tries to say. Acts 20, verse 28. Let me show you the importance of this whole thing. Acts 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. If you believe that Jesus Christ, if your Jesus is a created being that was not God in the beginning of the creation of the world, if that's your Jesus, then you believe a false Christ. You do not believe 
and the Lord Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. It's written about right here in these pages. You don't believe in Jesus. And Mark Richling, you don't believe in the Jesus Christ of the Bible. You believe in a created Christ. Interesting because the Antichrist is created. That's who you really believe in. That's who you really serve. The blood of Jesus Christ, that blood would mean nothing if Jesus was created. It would mean absolutely nothing. The reason that it redeems from sin, the reason that it saves from hell, is because it's God's eternal blood. Eternal. Not created. Let's end with some scriptures here. Two little, two more scriptures to go to. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Talked about this in the other study, but we're going to hit it one more time. For good measure. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, like one that's created... Martin Richling is preaching another Jesus whom we have not preached or if you receive another spirit. Watch Martin Richling for five minutes. If you can even stomach that long, he has another spirit in him. It's disgusting. It's like taking a swim through a cesspool watching this guy's videos. It's, it's, it's just vile. Oh, it's, it's, it's gross. It's just... It's horrible. This guy has another spirit. He has another Jesus. His Jesus is created. He has another spirit. Now look at this, which ye have not received, or another gospel. He tells you you don't have to pray. Only believe. Only believe. Well, then I guess everybody that believes in Jesus is saved automatically, huh? See? He qualifies for all three. He preaches another Jesus. He has another spirit. And he is preaching another gospel. And you know what? It says there, ye might well bear with him. If you're very, very weak in the faith, maybe a novice, and you hear this guy and you are deceived enough to actually listen to him and actually start believing him, then you're about as dumb and carnal as those Corinthian believers. But let me just finish up here with one more little rebuke. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. And this is to some of the people out there that actually follow Martin Richling. And it's to Martin Richling as well. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another in other words, it's not somebody you pray to Muhammad or Buddha or something. It's a perversion of true biblical Christianity. Exactly the way Satan would do it. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. Watch Martin Richling's videos and see how quickly he troubles you. See how quickly he tells you the Romans road is the road to hell and all this other stuff. You're not really saved. You're this, you're that, you're this, you know. He'll trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. May the Lord Jesus Christ rebuke thee, thou wicked Martin Richling, how dare you attack Jesus Christ and say He was created? How dare you? If you don't repent quickly, if you even can, you devil, if you don't repent quickly, God's wrath is going to come upon you and upon your house. You can attack me all you want. You can put down Brian Denlinger. You can put down King James Video Ministries. You can put down those who watch this channel. You can put us down all you want, but you don't put down Jesus Christ. You don't go out there and say that he is a created being, you wicked devil, you. 
I am going to pray that the Lord shuts down your wicked ministry. And let me tell you something there, devil. Your lies, your deception are starting to fall apart. We're starting to see through your little game. We're starting to see that you are the one that teaches work salvation, saying that you need to, you have to continually be justified. We see that you said that Peter was without error, that he never made a mistake, just like a papist would. And I have also seen in your teachings that you believe that you are perfect in your doctrines. Papal infallibility. You papist. You devil. May the Lord rebuke thee, Martin Richling.